Okay, good. Well, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Xin Gao. I'm an assistant professor from the University of Delaware. Today, I'm going to present our work, Timeprint Authenticating USB Flash Drives with Novel Timing Fingerprints. This work is collaborated with my colleagues, Patrick, Hailing, and Chase. So here is a quick snapshot of Timeprint. Timeprint is a new strategy that we have devised to fingerprint the USB drivers in a meaningful, repeatable, and hard to forge way. So basically, we have identified a new timing-based side channel that can be used to accurately fingerprint, fingerprint USB devices so that we can potentially identify or reject unauthorized USB devices. We have also examined the robotness and the capabilities on the different scenarios. To start, let's take a quick look on how a computer handles a USB device. So USB is the trusting protocol. As soon as you plug in the USB device, the computer system immediately queries the device uh, to ask what type it is. The USB can then decline all kinds of features, from being a microphone to a joystick input device to a flash drive. And then the computer system will initialize the entire driver stock to support those features. So here we see USB was designed to involve less or even no user input. So that it makes USB an incredibly user-friendly system. But it has an implicit trust that the USB device is always correctly, accurately reporting the capabilities. And this implicit trust can be a problem from a security perspective. Well, obviously, a, a, a USB device can lie, and attackers can make USB de device to behave maliciously. So a user can pick up a device on the ground, which looks like a USB flash drive, but once he plugs it into the computer, it clients the keyboard. A careless employee may also plug in a malicious but unauthorized device into the high security air gapped computer systems. So with all the capabilities granted by the system, the USB device can then do whatever he wants. For example, he may inject command to the terminal or maybe silently redirect the DNS queries. So well, many research have post proposed defenses against this type of attack. We find those defenses have their shortcomings. For example, some work proposed to use the device descriptor such as the window ID, product ID, or serial number to whitelist or blacklist devices. But those descriptors might suffer the problem that they might be forged. And the other works either require actual user interaction or maybe actual special hardware. So this leads us to our question, is there a software only, fast, and hard to forge solution. So our approach is to create a unique timing profile for each USB device. So let's take a look on the components of a standard USB flash drive and their potentials. A typical flash drive contains multiple pieces, including a USB adapter, a microcontroller to handle USB transactions, a flash controller to handle the flash translation layer, and the flash memory. So with some experiments, we found that the first two components really wasn't has, you know, much information to begin for us. But the rest of two components, flash controller and flash memory, are two interesting and complicated components. The flash memory is quite common, but unlike the standard spinning hard drive, it has a much more complicated read and write procedure. So the flash controller typically performs the real layering on the flash memory to prevent specific cells from wearing out before others do. So it maintains a virtual address to physical mapping to handle this. And each time a device read has to go through a series of complex operations. For example, it must determine which flash pages to read and figure out the actual physical address. 
access the data, and potentially reorder the data, and finally send the back data back to the device. So of course, each of those steps takes time. So we expect that due to the difference between the device and manufacturing, we might be able to find different timing profile for each device. So we thus conduct a preliminary experiment. Uh, as we focused mainly on the storage, storage device, we examined the ACSI protocol, the small computer system interface, so which provide a clean method to track all the transaction, storage transactions. Particularly, it contains three independent transactions. The host will first issue a read command to the device, specify the size and the location of the data to be read. And the device will respond with the data and following a status packet to indicate whether this transfer is successful or not. So to perform a precise timing measurement, we modify the SCSI driver to record two timing steps. The first one is recorded as soon as the command is completely sent to the device. And the second timestamp is recorded as soon as the data from the device is completely returned. So this figure shows the preliminary result. Particularly, we uh, measure a single location multiple times and then create a histogram of each device. In this experiment, we totally measured 16 different USB devices belonging to four different models. So each row is a device model, and each column is a specific device belonging to that particular model. So from this figure, we can immediately see some interesting results because clearly the shape of each row differs each other. So that we can definitely utilize this method to identify different device models. But if you look a little bit closer to the device graph, you can actually find that even though some those devices belonging to the same device model, they are graph still differs slightly differently. So this is encouraging that because we might be able to explore this to identify devices belonging to the same model. So this experiment motivates us to create a time print. So essentially, we have modified the USB driver to perform extra read to the device. And then we perform the timing measurement on those extra read commands and transform those timings to a fingerprint. We can then exploit this fingerprint to provide whitelisting or identification of the USB device. So if we find an unseen device, that is plugged in, time print should reject this device. To examine the effectiveness, we have checked three different scenarios. For the first scenario, we assume attackers has no knowledge of the proved USB devices, and thus he can simply bring a random USB device. So such a random USB device is highly likely not belong to the approved device model. So in short, we want to test why the time print can identify between different device models. In the second scenario, we assume a stronger attacker. So such attacker might know the acceptable device brand and device models. And then he can purchase his own particular USB device from that device model and brand. So in this in the second scenario, this test should able to reject unauthorized device from the same model and brand. And finally, we will examine whether we can accurately identify individual USB devices within the same model. So let's basically do a classification job. Particularly, we want to emphasize that we target on identify unknown brands and models and unseen devices which means that we do not collect any training data for those unseen devices because we have never seen them before. So this table shows the devices we have used in our experiment. It includes more than 40 devices from 12 different models. So we should let this test cover different sides of devices, different USB protocols, 
and different flash controllers. For some devices, we have purchased 10 of each to ensure that we could provide meaningful results about these intramodal differences. So next, let's talk about the details of the design. The first step is to acquire raw samples. For collecting raw samples, we divide the system to gather information from different locations on a random order. So basically, we design a single random series containing 3,000 reads. Each read is selected from one of the three phases and one of six locations. So this ensures the flash controller perform different read patterns. This random series of reads is generated once and used for all the tests on all devices to ensure there's no bias here. But the actual order is not important. So in total, we gathered 80 samples for each device, with 20 samples being one session. Totally, we have four sessions. After we acquired the raw data, we group them into different groups by their sites and the locations. And this allows us to further generate statistical information. Depends on different scenario, we use different features and different classifiers. For the first scenario, where we try to identify different device models, we believe this is kind of coarse grain information. So we simply take the mean of each group and utilize a k-means classifier. So essentially, the k-means uh, classifier only takes a sample of authorized devices. And if uh, when an unknown device show up, if, the, if it's outside the cluster boundary, we expect this is a disallowed device, and tampering should reject it. For the two other scenarios, we create a histogram for each group and then utilize a 2D convolutional neural network for the classification. Again, we want to emphasize that our task is to identify unseen devices belonging to the same model, which means that we do not collect training data for those unseen tested devices. So here is some results. For the first scenario, brand identification, we find that time print performs really good. We have more than 99% acceptance rate, which means that we almost can always accept a device if this device belongs to the authorized model or brand. At the same time, it will always correctly reject a device if this device does not belong to the authorized device model. For the second scenario, we're trying to identify devices belonging to the same model and the brand. Again, the result is quite encouraging. We're able to achieve more 98% average true acceptance rate and about 92% average true rejection rate. Remember that we're trying to reject unseen device, which we don't have the data for this device. So this indicates that time print has enough information to uniquely fingerprint a USB device. And finally, for the last scenario, uh, we test within each mode of drive using three sessions for training and the uh, remaining session for testing. So after this cross validation and the result average, we're able to achieve more than 98% average accuracy. So again, this is a very encouraging result. We have also looked at some practicity experiments, especially we focused on the latency and thus related to the user impact. We also test the impact of hardware variation, like different ports, different hubs, and even different hosts. We have also discussed the robotics with device usage. It's basically how writing a device can affect the fingerprint accuracy. For more details, please refer to our papers. So to summarize, we have demonstrated a new latency-based fingerprint solution for flash drivers, which requires no user interaction and utilizes non-fungible, forgeable characteristics. 
We have demonstrated the efficiency across more than 40 different USB devices and across a series of scenarios and adverse conditions. So that's basically ends my talk. If you are interested in our work, especially about the technical details, please feel free to email Patrick as he is the main contributor of this project. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. So we have two minutes uh, for a question. So one quick question. Uh, hello, this is Jianliang from Purdue University. Great work, I really enjoyed the talk. Thank you. So uh, my question is, uh, uh, is the aging of the device affect uh, its fingerprint? For example, uh, is the fingerprint of the device is the same way it's brand new or, uh, and uh, uh, let's say the device is being used for one year or even five years? Well, that's a good question, thank you. I think to the best of my knowledge, we have our, so for, for more than 40 devices, some of them are old devices, and most of them are new purchase devices. And we format all the devices uh, in our experiment following the same procedure. But I think the overall the accuracy is still uh, good and consistent across all the devices. We don't have a specific experiment studying the aging, but I believe uh, it should work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Shu Xuanzhou from the Ohio State University. Great work. So I have a question here. It's about the some some behavior of the controller. So I know some controller might have a caching mechanism that they can initially run very fast, but after some some like some data reason, it can just go slow. But but like after a while, when the cache is flush, they can then go again, be very fast. So, so how can you handle this? Well, thank you. That's a good question. I believe, again, to the best of my knowledge, we have disabled the cache mechanism to ensure that it won't have any impact on our accuracy. But okay, for thanks. more details, I think Patrick is the better person to answer. OK, thank you. All right, let's uh, just thank Xingyao. One more time. Thank you. The great.